I've got a uh, film script sent out to the industry. And, you know, when I'm talking about the industry, I'm really talking about the business. Of course. Uh, and it's about two people, man and a woman, uh, and they work in a meat place like this. And uh, the name of it is Meat Cute. And it's a <laughs> rom-com for the blue-collar folks. I love it. Yeah. We're going to get it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping to have it uh, at Christmas so I can easily sell it to Lifetime. <laughs> Meat Most Cute is also yeah. what Chris named his penis. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. That's disgusting. You weren't supposed um, to say that, Gail. Yeah. He put a wig on it and gives it a girl voice for some reason. Hi, I'm Fuck me. Fuck I was reading this thing about the Lifetime Christmas movies, and they said most of them have been written on a bus. So uh, I don't even know why that would be. I watched one last night where um, a man traveled from 1903 to his, the current town that he was in at the time, and, you know, yeah. he found love, you know, 100 years later. But why was it Christmas? And how did he travel? <laughs> well, there, well, we're missing a lot here. Yeah. Well, there's the there's the Christmas clock that he's mm -hmm. he was a guy who like fixed clocks, and he was also just a well-to-do man. Um, and uh, he, as he was fixing this clock on a blue moon, he was transported to the future. So it was magic clock is how he traveled through time. But <clears throat> it's a magic clock and a blue moon. Mm -hmm. It all knows the magic happening at the, the same time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it has to be a blue moon, and it has to be winding the magic clock. Um, and were they able to save the inn? It seems like most of the time you have <laughs> no. to save the inn. We did they it. Saved, we saved the inn. They saved the museum. There was a museum at stake. <laughs> Smart. And was something well, of no. his in? Was there a picture of him in the museum? Was that part of the? The twist. Well, the, muse the museum was his ancestral home, like when he was living in in 1903. He was like the Lord of the Manor or whatever, Ooh. and then he got transported. And well, the funny this part sounds is, sounds great. Send this. Yeah. To me. They did reenactments in the museum, and he played himself in the reenactment. <laughs> They're that like, this meta. guy's great. He's fucking <laughs> nailing this. <laughs> he seems now, old timey. Every, <laughs> every year, uh, conversations come up about the Lifetime Christmas movies, and I say that I'm going to watch them. And I never do. And this year, I'm going to do it. I'm yeah. going to watch some of these bad Lifetime movies. I never do it. I You're going to love you know, them. I see the trailers or the commercials, yeah. and I go, that's hilarious. I can't wait to see that. And I never watch them. Hallmark is a good channel for them, too. Hallmark is very it's the solid. same thing. You can't even tell if you're on Hallmark yeah. or Lifetime. It's the same <laughs> Got thing. It. Okay. Like, who started it first, Chris? I think it was Hallmark, and then Lifetime picked up on it, and now Netflix in the last few years has picked up on it, too. They're also producing their own fucking Christmas movies. Why do you kind of say fucking? There's no reason to say that. That's I apologize. Weird, right? How he does that? I was watching one the other day, and a guy, he had a business that he only makes Christmas cookies. That's the only thing that he makes. And um, he was going out of business. And then uh, on Christmas Eve... Everybody in three counties not only bought the Christmas cookies, but they pre-ordered for the following year. And Aww. the uh, yeah, and that actor was Daniel Day Lewis. So it was really uh, intense. <laughs> he plays the time traveling Christmas clock guy yeah. too, which is weird. If you've noticed, I've made a commitment to use the name Daniel Day Lewis whenever I possibly can. <laughs> Uh, here's a little fun fact about Daniel Day-Lewis. His father was Jerry Lewis. Lady how my son's actor. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give you guys a trivia question. Dan, uh, Jerry Lewis's son was famous without looking, Chris. Who was he and what was he famous for? All right, Jerry Lewis's son. I'm going to say Richard Lewis, comedian. That's a nice bet. Gail. I'm just going to take a guess here. It's his son, mm -hmm. Huey Lewis. <gasps> Close. His son is 
Gary Lewis from the 1960s pop rock band, Gary Lewis and the Playboys. And you might know his song, This I think it's This Diamond Ring. Who wants to buy this diamond ring? And he was uh, kind of popular when the English invasion. He did like an L.A. version of the English invasion. Wow, I did not know this. No idea. Really, really big. Nice. And, and then Dean Martin's son, Dino, was in Dino, Desi, and Billy. Dino, Desi, and Billy, yeah, with Desi Arnaz Jr. They're a super group. Yeah, they also, were. Now, in retrospect, I feel like if Jerry Lewis's son was Huey Lewis, I would know this. I mean, this seems like <laughs> something that would have come up. It not coming will, up about Gary Lewis makes sense. I think Gary Lewis had like eight top 40 hits, though. Really? And he was really unattractive. He was almost the first <laughs> Elvis Costello. <laughs> Did not look like a pop star. Still didn't. Uh, still got hit by his dad, though. Aww. Jerry Lewis was one of those guys that was apparently a very bad dad, which is always funny to me. They should make like a, a mommy dearest about him, daddy dearest. I'd love to see it. There was one uh, a book like that uh, about Bing Crosby. He used to punch really? the shit out of his children. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, and he'd be like. Who left the mayonnaise b -b 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 all the way open? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they said he was a fucking terror. <laughs> like his kids had post-traumatic stress from Bing Crosby. <laughs> oh, and he, he would chase them, but very slowly. B -b 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 <laughs> you see this new guy, David Bowie, is moving down the street? <laughs> Seems weird, right? Mm -hmm. So beloved, Bing Crosby. So what beloved, till he got Why home did and he, he was be so gruff. Well, you know, he had a lot of stress on him. You know, of just knowing Bob Hope and Bob Hope being so fast and getting all the jokes off, and then when his kids were joking around, he was like, "Who are you, the next Bob Hope?" And he go in there and starts just start stomping them. <laughs> And you know what? I think Bob knew. You know what I mean? I think he could have done something. He's complicit. Another fucking enabler. <laughs> Jesus, Chris. <laughs> Give your mom a break. You know what I mean? She's trying the yeah. best she could. <laughs> she was the Bob Hope of his family. <laughs> Imagine if she could see you now spending Thanksgiving in Frackville. I don't know Imagine what would me. Amy would be thinking of this. I hope she'd be wearing a mask. <laughs> I'd be wearing a mask if I was your mother. I'd wear it right over my fucking head like a superhero. <laughs> <laughs> she was wearing a mask before every PTA meetings. And one of the children is mine. Which one? The one who peed himself. <laughs> oh, no. In the bounce house? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was in the bounce house. Took his dick out and sprayed it all over. No, I pissed my pants. <laughs> Classic. This was stuck up. Oh, by the way, Chris, good news for you. Yes. Sirius XM uh, has a hallmark radio channel now oh yes deck the halls with hallmark I, channel radio i can't wait because look i've also been watching hallmark channel they have a, a morning show i guess like today but it's just like uh just about hallmark movies and people have been in hallmark christmas films and they, they just talk about hallmark so I'm, I'm tuned into this radio station are you kidding me they do that <laughs> yeah leanne rhymes was on yesterday talking about one of her uh Hallmark films. I can't fucking believe it. That's a great idea. People calling in. Leanne, you were so great in that. And I'm so happy that you two got together at the end. I was concerned. And you saved the end. Yeah. 
You managed to save the inn somehow, and that thing was really the centerpiece of the town. That town is so cute. You're really so, nice so quiet. There. Yeah. Uh -huh. I thought they I would really hate go all out for town. Christmas. Yeah. They really do. They knock it out of the park every year for Christmas. They had that pageant. Remember the pageant? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so is that what you're listening to in the morning instead of Jim and Sam? You're just over listening to Liam Rhymes <laughs> taking questions? There was another Christmas movie on the day before where the whole thing was based around this guy coming back to his hometown to build a Christmas sleigh for the big Christmas uh, like march down fucking Main Street. Then he found love. He found love. Good. He I don't think did. they do a... They don't do a march down Main Street. You make it sound like they're Nazis. <laughs> it's a show of force, really. Um, show off some of the weapons. <laughs> some of the tanks. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder who's the biggest star who's done one of those movies. It'd be interesting uh, to see. Vanessa Hudgens has gotten some heat in the last couple of years. She's done a few of them. Uh, she uh, she was in a big one last year for Netflix called A Christmas Night, but Night was spelled K-N-I-G-H-T, and a uh, knight from medieval times was trans uh, transported to <laughs> Wait, modern day. so much time travel? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Why? And I'm not, I don't want to spoil anything, but she finds love with him, and he doesn't go back in time. <laughs> I don't want to uh, ruin anything, but uh, Vanessa Huggins gets killed with a lance in the last scene. <laughs> oh, my God. So things don't work yeah. out between the two of them. Yeah. It's, he's a black knight. He's kind of evil. This movie was very much like Encino Man when he, he was learning how to Netflix and chill and interact in modern day. <laughs> it's so um. funny. I mean, I don't, I don't know if it, this is going to be a big star, but I do know that I saw one like a trailer for one once with um, Dermot Mulroney. I don't know. Well, if that's gonna... a big star. Cool. Okay. Do that? Cool. Yeah. That would be the biggest the star they ever had. No offense <laughs> to Vanessa Hudgens, but who gives a shit? <laughs> um, this year, uh, Tony Romo is supposed to be on it, and the the thing is, he's supposed to call a game on Christmas Eve and he won't make it back to save the inn. So hopefully he can time travel. Uh, Jim Nance, who's in the booth with him now, says he wants Romo money or he's not re-signing with CBS. And Romo's making $17.5 million. Oh, they work together? Yeah, it's Nance and Romo in there. All right, so how much does Nance make? I don't know what he's making now, but it's not $17.5 million. And he wants Romo money. Well, I, that, I figured that because that's why he would ask for the seventeen and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he was making $22 million demanding. I want to make to the make. exact same. I'm no better than this man. <laughs> you take me down $5.5 million or I'm fucking out of here. <laughs> Can right, we just give him a raise? Absolutely <laughs> not. Yeah. I, I found Nance's salary. He's making six and a half million a year on his current contract. Now, here's the deal. You know that when he signed that contract, he goes, wait, I'm just, all I got to do is watch a football game and talk <laughs> about it. And you're going to give me six and a half mil. Okay. We're doing this. And that's, and you feel great. And then you find out the other guy's getting 17 mil. And you're like, I'm being ripped off. I'm yeah. poor. That's the funny thing is that people, it's not even that somebody is like, I should make more, but they hate to hear that their coworker or someone right. doing the same job. It's almost like they'd be just as happy if you took them down a peg. It would be like, nice yeah, if they that did that. They, they would go, look, Jim, we can't give you that money, but we can force Romo into a new $6 million contract. <laughs> okay. That's fucking perfect then. <laughs> ESPN must be paying their fucking booth team like minimum wage for the fucking job they're doing. 
They're the worst. <laughs> it's, de- it's ESPN has destroyed Monday Night Football. It's it's a joke. Greasy and, it, and Levy need to get the fuck out of there. <laughs> if it's a joke, why aren't I laughing, Chris? It's a good point. I should have said that. <laughs> All right, I'd hate to go back to Dermot Mulroney, but this was this is just going to drive me nuts. So I was like, I'm right, right? Like he was in one of those Hallmark movies. I looked it up. It's called um, The Christmas Train, which also could be a holiday porn movie, I suppose. Um, and <laughs> in it, uh, there's lots of other stars. Danny Glover is in this movie, as well as Joan Cusack. So this is wow. a star-studded uh, a Hallmark movie. But... The thing that really bothered me is this write-up of it when I was trying to figure out what it was about said Dermot Mulroney like from Four Weddings and a Funeral. He's not in that movie, right? No. Are they thinking of my best friend's wedding? Yes. What a terrible write-up. Still, Four Weddings and Funerals, fantastic. I mean, when you find out It's a great movie. Yeah, when you find out that the gay guy dies, fuck. (laughs) Spoiler alert. (laughs) <laughs> mm. I saw this uh, movie on Hallmark and Danny Glover steals it. He's like, I'm getting too old for this Christmas <laughs> shit. <laughs> it's so and there's a, it's a Christmas Eve and they can't find him. And then they go up to the bathroom and okay. he just sees this thing like the toilet paper said that he's sitting on a bomb. So he's just sitting there and his legs are fucking exhausted. Never even gets to wipe his ass. <laughs> I'm getting too old for the shit Riggs Riggs Christmas is coming <laughs> I'm going to be watching One of these fucking movies tonight So I can call in on Hallmark Radio <laughs> You should I mean they're on 24 hours a day Doesn't matter what point in the film you start it You'll know it's going to happen I'd be rather be there at the end now that you bring it up. Mm-hmm. Although I turned off like something about trying to save a winery at Christmas and it's been bugging me ever since. I'm like, I want I hope they save that fucking winery. <laughs> I saw that, it burned down. <laughs> that one it goes under. <laughs> yeah. I just uh so this she comes sad. back to the town, right? And they were both talking about when they were younger they used to stomp on grapes with their bare feet. I'm like I don't think that ever happened in America, let alone in this fucking century. Yeah, that's some I Greek like that's shit mostly, or something. Yeah, I feel like Greece and Italy they used to do this. I feel like French rednecks don't think anyone would do that. that. Yeah, <laughs> French rednecks. <laughs> but the uh, the lead actor uh, was Daniel Day Lewis in this, and he was <laughs> intense. <laughs> I just wish they could have saved that winery. Yeah. I mean, it seemed like, like they were going to. <laughs> yeah. Give me the wine, Lord. <laughs> Give me the wine. The end, Santa Claus just shows up and he's like, I guess I was too late to save the winery. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I hate anyone to have a, like a fat guy in town who's Santa Claus. I'd rather you just had a realistic <laughs> rom-com than a magical Santa Claus who lives in town. You got to go see what about Chris. Time travel. You got to go see Chris. He's a toy maker here in town. <laughs> well, I'll be busy on Christmas Eve. <laughs> Very busy. <laughs> you ever notice anything weird about Chris? No. And then, like, wow. Yeah. He's like. <laughs> So familiar. Oh, I remember you. You were the boy who wanted the pretend. And they're like, what? How did you know what I got when I was five? <laughs> oh, I have my way. Oh! oh! Jesus Christ. <laughs> Chris, it's not that funny. <laughs> Maybe I'll see you when you're sleeping. Huh? What? <laughs> I know who's been the holy Luba night. <laughs> you okay, man? <laughs> I'll be everywhere in the world that night. <laughs> that one wasn't even subtle. He's not even trying to hide it anymore. 
<laughs> Let's just you say I'll be in a flying sleigh somehow. <laughs> what? <laughs> but they, yeah, you've seen those, right, Chris? There's always like a fat guy with a beard that they don't. You're not supposed to know it's Santa, but it is. Of course. As soon as you see him come on screen, it's like, oh, this guy's going to be fucking magical Santa Claus. <laughs> fucking shocker. I'll tell you what I do like, though. They do a lot of mixed relationships. You ever notice that? Like, they have no problem yeah, that's cool. mm -hmm. with that. They love it. They prefer <laughs> it. it. it up. Yeah. <laughs> be really awkward. Like, oh, so you're married to a black woman, huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> At, at Christmas? This is odd. <laughs> you know, I know I'm old and I've been around a long time, but I remember when they would hang people like you. <laughs> <laughs> I guess times oh have changed. We'll only be watching that tonight then. Maybe we should do a movie club one week on one of those fucking movies. We'll look <laughs> yes, over. We have to. We have to. Please. <laughs> That's all of December. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> every every week in December. <laughs> I was surprised when the fat man became Santa Claus. <laughs> didn't see it coming. Yeah, I guess I forgot the magic of Christmas and I forgot that Santa was real now that I'm an adult. <laughs> When when people are like, well, you forgot, and you're like, well, that's because I buy presents for my children. I don't get help from anyone. I have a big issue with uh, those Christmas uh -oh. movies. Uh oh. So it's in... like we've got a Grinch here, guys. No, I love <laughs> I love Christmas movies, but in in movies where Santa exists. There's always this thing where the parents don't believe in Santa, even though he's real. But then where do they think the presents came from? <laughs> For their kids all these years. It, it, seems, like, <laughs> it seems like a 12-year-old boy would be asking this question, <laughs> and not a man. But it doesn't make sense as far as plot goes. And like, it just doesn't make sense. That, like in, For example, in the Santa Claus with Tim Allen... So you could say, like, oh, maybe mom and dad split getting gifts and one thought the other one got it. Well, in the Santa Claus, he, does, he delivers a fucking kayak to a family. You would remember if one of you got a kayak. Magic, though. No, I know yeah, it's... you got to understand the magic of Christmas. <laughs> no, That's I, what you're I, I understand here. the magic. I'm just saying, why do these parents refuse to admit Santa exists and tell their kids... They, they all really want to make it clear that Santa doesn't exist in these movies, even though that goes pretty much against what most parents do. <laughs> Um, but it just, it just doesn't make sense that they refuse to admit Santa exists, yet they get these presents every year. That Maybe there was some kind Christmas of, yeah. movies where the parent is going, uh, give it up, Max, he's not real. <laughs> it's like, Jesus, Dad. <laughs> Maybe you're not real, Rudolph. <laughs> what? <laughs> but why couldn't he put a spell on the parents so they don't rem they thought they bought the kayak but they didn't exactly because if he was going to put a spell why didn't he wouldn't he put a spell that he's real and that the, the parents should believe no, no, that no. he exists because faith doesn't matter if it's real faith only matters if you have to believe it so why would he then cause them to think that they got the presents because then like, that doesn't even make sense. Look, we're in this no, really fucking confusing sense. world right now. It makes total <laughs> sense if you think about the magic of Christmas. No, man, I get the magic I Christmas. I love you Christmas. Apparently, you hate Christmas more than anyone I've ever even heard of no, before. No, I love Christmas. I just have an issue with this one thing that they do in movies where the parents refuse to admit Santa exists, yet they reap all the benefits of Santa Claus. Maybe that's part of the fun. Pretending you bought the gifts. <laughs> hey, you can pretend all you want, but then don't go yelling at your your twelve year old that they have to stop believing in he's, Santa. Because he's acting like a baby. You know what I mean? You want him to start being a little cooler, smoke a little bit, you know? Okay. Maybe get in a little yeah. trouble. I get that aspect, but just You don't want a nerd for a kid. No. You don't. 
I don't know if my mom knows that I know Santa is fake, <laughs> to be honest with you. I like we never had the formal conversation and then yeah. she'll ask me what I want for Christmas and I'll say like blank and she'll go, Well we'll have to see if Santa brings that for you. And then yeah. I just go along with it because I think we're just playing That's along sweet. with Christmas. But I now I start to think maybe she thinks I don't know. Here's the thing, Vito, and you're gonna find this out. Santa is real, but your mom isn't. That would that would really fuck me up. <laughs> Cause do you notice that you're the only one who ever sees your mom? Yeah, Doesn't it seem it. weird to you? Mm -hmm. It is. I, I, just, I guess I never just thought about it. Mm -hmm. Isn't it weird that a lot of people are starting Christmas way early this year? Like people have trees up in their fucking yep. houses. It's really, really early this year. Re I mean... When you're doing a pre-Thanksgiving Christmas, that's that's intense. Now, here's the thing. Normally, we get mad about it, but now we're like, yeah, go ahead. Put your Do lights up. Makes you happy. Yeah. Put <laughs> yeah. your lights up. Start making cookies now. <laughs> because I think some people do, like, live in Christmas world. Like, I literally think, like, Christmas is their happy place. Right. So they're like, I'm going to make is it's like people who just live to go on vacation. Mm -hmm. These are people who like they just live all year long for Christmas. So, of course, they want Christmas to start in November. And then on, on December 26th, they just start fucking crying uncontrollably. <laughs> and they're like, I got a whole fucking year. I got a whole year. See, here's my thing. I feel like the feeling of Christmas is Christmas Eve. Not Christmas yeah. Day. Yeah. I loved Christmas Eve as a kid. Christmas Day yeah. actually gave me like a little bit of anxiety. I think one, the overwhelming, you know, everything kind of coming to a head. It's over very quickly in the morning. And then the anxiety of like, wow, I can't believe that's done. And now we have a year until we do it again. All of those aspects. Christmas was a little bit, you know, uncomfortable for me. I loved Christmas Eve. Christmas, I always had like a little bit of a hangover feel. You know what yeah. I mean? Christmas sucks because all of a sudden you have to go to your like aunt or your cousin's house and you just want to play with your new shit. That's a good point too, man. It fucking yeah. feels terrible. We're like, leave your stuff and we're going to go yeah. see your grandmother. She's going to give put you on, underwear. <laughs> put on this uh, very tight, lacy dress and some uh, stockings. Yeah. And we're going to go to grandma's house. No, I just got a bike. Please. You can can bring, I that would be here? so funny too. Like if your grandmother gives you underwear, you're like, I want to put them on right now. Just start fucking loading up. <laughs> So putting on like three pairs of socks, the underwear over your pants. This is fucking amazing. My mom would say you could bring one thing with you, but like it was in the video game era. So it would just be like, it doesn't work like that. Like I can't yeah. just bring this disc with me where we go. <laughs> you, can, you can look at the liner notes yeah. of your video game. Um. Yeah, I guess that's probably why people start so damn early is because it's the pre-Christmas feeling that's good. By the way, during the video game era too, it felt like less Christmassy because instead of like the kid playing with the train in front of the tree, he just took this fucking thing into his room and started playing with it You're for like well 36 enjoyed. straight hours. My mom would get so mad because she would just want to have the Yule log on. <laughs> And I would be like, well, you just gave me all this shit to play on a TV, so we're at a real crossroads here, Leslie. Watch me play this O.J. Simpson football game. Chris is being quiet because he never got a present for Christmas. No, Chris. Also, like, Christmas Day uh, didn't have anywhere to go. There wasn't any other family to visit. Well, now, look, you get to go out to Frackville. <laughs> I'll tell you this about Frack Town. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's Christmas fucking shit everywhere on everyone's houses. Yeah. That's big true, guy. man. They go big time, huh? Yeah. Yeah, shocked. this is something we through. always used to complain about. Oh, can you believe they started Christmas so, so early? And now everyone's like, yep, 
It's fine. Go ahead. Go ahead and do it. They should make a Hallmark movie about Fractown. The water got fucking cleaned. <laughs> <laughs> we need a drink Christmas of water. Miracle. Yeah. <laughs> Christmas miracle is somebody shows up with a truck of Poland Spring and everybody can finally <laughs> hydrate. She's an environmental lawyer and she's an oil driller. <laughs> Dude, you're fucking you nailing it. This could be perfect. So good. She was gonna make partner, but she got forced to go home for the holidays. How many, like, do you feel like middle-aged women are trying to write movies for fucking Hallmark and Lifetime right now? They're like, I don't want to think I could write one of these. <laughs> it's about, yeah, it's about a divorcee, 54 years old, who meets a really handsome guy. From the past. <laughs> from the from the distant past, he's a Civil War veteran. He's quite and rugged, he, actually. Yeah, he's yeah. very rugged. The only problem is he fought on the side of the South, and he's extremely racist. <laughs> he lost his leg to gangrene. Yeah, he's a one-legged peg leg. He doesn't even where did he get a modern leg? <laughs> yeah, he blames it on the as he puts it, colored. So I don't know if it's ready. But damn, is he rugged. Yeah. A group of people uh, were trying to pull down a Civil War statue, and it came to life, and she oh, fell yes. in love with it. Vito, Vito. Why are you so good at nailing this? These. <laughs> you're fucking nailing these one after another. <laughs> Who pulled me down? <laughs> uh, we got to get going.